People are always trying to stop heat. From insulating our houses to buying fancy thermoses, coolers, even the clothing that we buy is specifically designed to either control or stop heat. But for all its importance, many people don't even know what heat is, let alone that there's three different ways heat transfers. And each of these three unique types of heat transfer has its own particular way to stop it. Hang out with me today as we learn how to beat the heat. Now, first of all, what is heat? Well, scientifically speaking, heat is the energy that is transferred between two objects that are at different temperatures. Now, it's important to note that heat always moves from warmer things to the cooler things. You can't get coldness. You can only gain energy from a warmer object. For example, when you touch a surface that's cooler than your hand, you can think that you're getting some cold. But actually, it's your hand that's transferring heat. It's giving away your thermal energy to the colder object, and that is why your hand feels cold. Remember that important point. Heat always moves from warmer objects to cooler objects. Now, the first way heat transfer happens is by something called conduction. Conduction is heat transfer by collisions between the molecules of a substance. Objects must be in direct physical contact for this type of heat transfer to occur. Let's take a spoon, for example. Now, although it looks like one solid object, we know it's actually made up of many tiny moving molecules. The faster one of these molecules is moving, the more thermal energy it has and the warmer it will feel. Now, conduction is heat transfer when fast moving molecules bump into nearby slower moving molecules and speed them up. In this way, thermal energy spreads through an object or between objects that are directly in contact with each other. So going back to the pot on the stove, the fast moving molecules of the burning gas speed up the molecules of the metal pot. Then these molecules spread their thermal energy to the water, which in turn bumps into the molecules of the spoon. Now the spoon molecules bump into each other, spreading the heat all the way up the handle. If you keep it in the pot too long, the spoon may get too hot to even touch. Ouch! That's fast! That's right, when we say that something is hot, we actually mean that the molecules of that substance are moving painfully fast. So how do we stop heat transfer by conduction? Well, coolers are particularly good at slowing this type of heat transfer, so I thought I would take a closer look at mine to see if it could help me understand. Surely, there must be some magic that keeps heat from getting to my cold drink. I delicately dissected the cooler and found that inside there was no secret sauce or wizardry. Instead, I found air pockets and insulation. You see, insulators are materials that have molecules that are often spread far apart, which makes it less likely these molecules will collide and transfer their thermal energy. Air itself is a pretty good insulator if it's trapped in spaces where it can't flow around. In fact, when I looked at insulators under a microscope, I found that they were mostly little pockets of trapped air. Now, believe it or not, there's something that works even better than insulators at stopping conduction. What could that be? Well, a space that has no molecules at all. That's right, something called a vacuum. This isn't a vacuum like you clean your house with. It's a space between objects where the molecules have been removed or vacuumed out. If you think you would have to go to some space lab to see such a thing, you're wrong. Look no further than your insulated thermos. The reason it's so much smaller inside than out 
is because in the high quality versions of these, there's a reinforced layer where the molecules have been sucked out. And that's why these vacuum sealed thermoses have an impressive ability to keep things either hot or cold for a really long time. So the secret to stopping heat transfer by conduction is to stop the molecules from hitting each other. Think insulators, or better yet, a vacuum. The second way that thermal energy moves around is by something called convection. Convection is what happens when warmer, less dense fluid floats upward and cooler, more dense fluid sinks downward. Fluids are types of matter that can flow or move around, so both liquids and gases can do this. For example, the air does this constantly. If I release milkweed over a heater, I can see it ride upward on the rising warm air. If I look up above a large fire, I may notice the leaves of a tree blowing violently in the updraft, an upward blast of wind from the rising warm air that has been heated by the flames. You see, convection is not like conduction, where molecules mostly stay in place and spread their energy by bumping into other molecules. Rather, with convection, these molecules just up and move. They float away to a new location and bring their thermal energy with them. So, how does one minimize heat loss by convection? Well, by creating sealed or closed systems where fluids cannot flow in or out. For instance, if I fill a thermos with hot soup and leave the lid off, convection will carry the warm molecules out of the thermos and cooler molecules will take their place. My soup will cool much quicker than if I had firmly sealed the lid in place. So again, to stop convection, don't let those fluid molecules flow out or in. Create a closed or sealed system. And now to the final form of heat transfer. Radiation. You see, in conduction and convection, molecules are bumping into each other or flowing around. But in radiation, thermal energy is moving by electromagnetic waves. Now, an amazing thing about radiation is that it does not require matter to move. So it can travel right through the emptiness of space or right through that vacuum that engineers worked so hard to make. Now it's obvious that the sun is giving off radiation. Think about it. We put on sunscreen to protect ourselves from the harmful rays. But it's less well known that all objects are giving off some electromagnetic or thermal radiation. That's right. Look around you right now. Everything you see is giving off some thermal radiation. And the warmer the object is, the more energy that radiation will carry. For instance, when we look at a locomotive, we see something like this. But if we could see all the thermal radiation, it would look quite different. Don't believe me? Just look at this image of a locomotive taken with a thermal imaging camera. The bright spots are the parts of the train releasing more energetic thermal radiation, while the darker spots are releasing less energetic thermal radiation. So how does radiation transfer thermal energy? Well, when energetic thermal radiation hits the molecules of an object or substance, guess what happens? That's right, the molecules speed up. And faster moving molecules means more kinetic or thermal energy. So what is the most effective way to stop thermal radiation? After all, if it can even travel through a vacuum, it must be impossible to stop, right? Well, no. You simply have to bounce the wave back. Materials that are reflective to electromagnetic radiation will turn that energy around and send it back where it came from. Hence the reason why windshield reflectors, thermoses, and many other objects are shiny and reflective. 
So let's put it all together and come up with the ultimate plan to beat the heat. Number one, how are you going to stop conduction? Well, just stop those molecules from bouncing into each other by using insulators or better yet, a vacuum. Two, convection. How are you going to stop those fluids from flowing in and out? Well, you've got to create a closed system. And three, radiation. How are you going to stop those electromagnetic waves? Just bounce them back where they came from with reflective materials. Have a great day, keep it cool, and as always, stay curious, my friends. Mm -hmm.